Welcome again to another tutorial for AFC certification. This will be questions and answers. If you do good on this, you know your topics very well. Now, I'm going to give you the, the questions, and we're going to go throughout, and we're going to give you the answers. First of all, what is this symbol? This one over here. What is this symbol? Where is this located? What is this symbol? How is this activated? How does it work? What is this symbol? What's the purpose of this relay? What is a control? What's this for? All these bulbs over here. What is this symbol for? And what is this one for? There's an open over here. What will happen to the bulbs? There's an open over here. What will happen to the bulbs? What's the purpose of this rheostat? These are all the questions that I have. If the, all these questions were written on the test, how would you approach it? First thing is, analyze the schematic. Know how it works. Then you can troubleshoot it. And any make, any model. Any situation I don't, it doesn't matter if it's radio tv video audio you have to know how the schematic works what's the starting point let me ask you that i can start from here from b plus and go through the whole thing but what catches my eye what gets my attention right away this catches my eye a real stat what's the purpose of a real stat if you remember the beginning of the videos i made videos about potentiometers POTS they're called and rheostat. Rheostat is a variable resistor that you can change the value of it. You can make it 100 ohms to 500 ohms, 120 ohms, 140. You can, you can turn it and you change the resistance. What's the difference, you might ask? A resistor has a set value. If you have a resistor, R1, it's set at 100 ohms. You have another resistor, it's set at 200 ohms, and that's it, you cannot change it. This, you can change the resistance, depending on the value. It could go from 100 to 1,000 ohms. Anywhere in between, you can change the resistance. Why do I bring that point up? When you change the resistance, what happens? And this is important for the ASC. You're changing the current, the amount of current. Correct? If, you, if you're lowering the resistance in the circuit, you're increasing the current. If this would be resistant resistors, a total resistance is this plus this. Again, if you're lowering the resistance by turning this rheostat, right? You could go clockwise or counterclockwise, or this is automatic in here. Therefore, when you, again, decrease the resistance, you're increasing the current, now, instead of resistors, let's put light bulbs. What will happen if you're increasing the current by decreasing the resistance? These will get brighter. Doesn't that remind you of something? I had a previous video that we had a rheostat over here. And if you remember what I said was, this is a dimmer switch. That's all it is. When you are in your car and you control your dimmer switch, you're turning it, what are you doing? You're in, you are either decreasing or increasing the intensity of the lights inside your car, the courtesy lamps, all these, all these bulbs, correct? That's what this is. Now, the difficult part, the difficult part. How does the current flow? Toyotas, this is for Toyotas. Remember, all the current flows in the same direction. So let's start from here. You know, we know this is a relay. What has to happen to a relay? You, if you watched the video before, I told you usually the top goes to 12 volt, but don't assume it. The bottom goes to ground. Don't assume it like in Chevy's. Let's see if the top does go to plus. We'll go here, we'll go here. Okay, it goes through this link, right? So this fuse in the alternator, which I just answered the question, and then another fusible link, 
and it goes to the battery. So therefore, the top of it is 12 volts. That means the other side of it has to go to ground. Correct? Let's go down through this junction connector to now this integration relay. Toyota's loves this. 10 transistors are used as switches to be turned on and off. Therefore, you could think of this as a switch, as a relay. When will it be when will it be used as a switch? The computer or the BCM, the body control module, figures it out. When it is used, right? When this is a switch or connection from here to here, we come down over here. This is going into this combination switch, which Toyota's love. It's going into coming out pin one from here going to pin 14 over here on this combination switch comes out pin 16 over here and where does this go to to ground so therefore this other side goes to ground however let's verify this you could put the tail the tail when the tail lights come on headlights go on right same time so therefore Current is flowing through this, which is a switch, a relay, going through here. As you see, it goes through this column. It's like a truth table. It goes through, th th through here. You see this circle? That means there's a connection from 14 to this circle. This is a jumper now. Through this circle, and it comes out through here. Okay? Now, the other side of it, and I'll, sh I'll, prove, I'll, sh I'll show you, goes through here, through here. This is a jumper. Comes out here, goes here. Now, at the same time, 14 goes to this one also, the headlamps. Goes through this. This is a jumper. Comes out here also. Therefore, the taillights are on and the head, he headlamps are on when this relay is activated. Right? So we have a ground. We have a, a, a this. Something new. Toyota. What can you do? Now, when this is activated, guess what? This is now closed. Therefore, this is the hard part. Current flows through this current flows through this this is a common common bus line almost like we had before right current flows now you see all these bulbs current flows here splits up goes here splits up goes here splits up and go here splits up and goes over here right all these different paths comes out here goes over here where does it go all the current goes here here, here. Where does it go afterwards? Well, current wouldn't go back over here. It has to go some meeting point, some common point, right? It wouldn't go over here because that's a bulb again. It wouldn't go. It wouldn't come from a bulb and go back to the bulb. It doesn't make sense. So therefore, that's not the path. We continue over here. We continue over here. We see what's going. Where this is going to? Guess where this is going to? We come over here. We come over here. Another another junction connector. Toyotas. We come over here to this rheostat, to pin two, right? Pin three goes to, guess what? Ground. Therefore, does it make sense? Yes. All the current flows to the bulbs through this junction connector, and it comes out at this point. These are the inputs. This is the inputs. These are the output. This is the output. Right here is the output. Comes back through the rheostat, through the dimmer switch, that we can control the intensity of these lights to ground. Where does the other side of this go to? We need a B plus. Can we get a B plus? Come over here. Come over here. It's not going to go to a bulb. Let's continue on this path. Come over here. And here it is, B plus. This one is the B plus. B plus, this is the ground. This is the control for it. This is how we control the dimmer switch, the resistance of it. What about the other side? Right? We said current flows here. What about current flowing over here? Through here. Through this, through this, right? Through this to give it the B plus. Through this, through this, through this. Where's it, where are they all going to meet? All the currents went here. Where are the currents going to meet? They all come here, come here, and they all come to this junction connector. And where do they all go? Guess what? This is the light green that I put over here. See the light green? The light green means they're all connected coming out here. They're all going over here. Guess where they're going again? To the rheostat. All of this going to the rheostat. So what, so what happens? All these bulbs are connected to the rheostat. Does that make sense? Yes, because it's a dimmer switch that's controlling all the intensity 
of these light bulbs. Okay? I asked you in the very beginning, ASC certification, the test is in front of you. What's the symbol? FL, fusible link, right? This is the main one. I asked you again, what's this for? Another fusible link, right? Where's the located fusible link box? That's where it's blocked. This is where it's located. What's the output terminals? One and two. Pins one and two are the pins, right? Terminals are F. I asked you then again, what's this for? What's this relay for? This is for the taillights. It says it right here. Okay? I asked you again, where's the ground for this? Right through this. This is the ground to activate it. When this is switched on, actually this is a diode, it'll be probably 0.7 volts. So you probably measure about 0.7 volts here to ground, which is not really that important. How much will I measure over here? ASC certification, 12 volts, right? The other side will be close to ground, zero, but because of this diode, maybe 0.7, which is negligible. Anyway, how much over here? 12 volts. How much over here? 12 volts. Why? We don't lose any voltage through a switch, right? How much over here? 12 volts. And what's this, what's this symbol for? Uh, a few. See the difference? As we stressed before, know your symbols well for, this, for the test. Know your symbols very well. Okay? This is a transistor. This is a diode. Now, we came over here. We came over here, right? And we went through all the current paths. Where is the symbol? Where is the symbol for the air conditioner switch? Which bulb? This one. Where is the symbol for the rear window def defogger, the defroster? This one. It says it right here, right? What about the radio? This one. This one. Now, I ask you another question. Now, if this one is open, if this bulb is o if this bulb is open, would it affect the other ones? No. Current can still flow through the other ones. If this bulb is open, can it still affect the other ones? No, the other ones will still will still be lit. The one the bulb that's open or burned out will affect only that circuit. And the other ones can still remain. And isn't that true? When you go to on your car, or when one bulb is out, the other ones work. Correct? Now, problem with this junction connect connector. There's a problem over here. There's a break over here. What will happen? What would be the result of that? If they ask you that an ASC certification test, it's open over here. What does that mean? That means all of these bulbs will be out. Other question, what about these bulbs? Guess what? If there's a break here, there's still current able to flow through these, and these will still work. So when you ever have a problem, just don't look at what's not working. Look at what is working, and that will help you in troubleshooting, as I've done over here. The fact that these don't light, but the fact that these do light, tell me this path is okay. It tells me the fuse is okay, correct? If these bulbs, if this is an open over here, as I've drawn, there's an open over here. I ask myself first thing, what about these bulbs? Are these good? If these are lit, that means the fuse is good. If, these are, if there's a break over here, these will not be lit. Right? But these will be lit. I just cut, I didn't even put a multimeter. I didn't even put 12 volts. I didn't have to do it because... The schematic is my guide, and it tells me how to troubleshoot, and I cut down the time. All these schematics that I do with these videos, I'm not even putting a multimeter on it, not even a scope, nothing. All I'm doing is pure troubleshooting and interpretation, analysis from this. This is my guide. This is my roadmap, right? Therefore, again, if there's a break over here, it will affect these. It will not affect these. That's the answer to that question when I asked you if this is open. If this is open over here, how about everything else? This will work. This will work. This one will not work. This bulb will not work. Right? I have a problem now. I go to my car. All the bulbs are on. All the bulbs are on, right? I play with the, with the, with the, with the dimmer switch. I try to control the intensity. Doesn't happen. The, the intensity is still the same. Right? They're all lit. 
What does that tell me? In troubleshooting, guess what? The fuse is good. The relay is good. How do I know that? The ground is good. How do you know that? Because they're all lit. The problem being, I cannot control the intensity. Why? Because I cannot control the resistance, which means I cannot control the current. And what is responsible for that? This guy. And that's why I saw the very first point of this video, I pointed out to this real stat. If you have a problem with the lights being on, it cannot be the fuse, it cannot be the relay. How would they be lit then? It can, it can be the, the real stat. Now, you're going to ask me, but this is a return ground, right? If the real stat is open over here to ground, how are these lit? True. This one can be good, right? This The path can be good. However, the inside of it, the control, the control of it cannot may, may not be good. Whatever is inside over here. So therefore, you can still have a path here, right? But I cannot be able to control the, the, the resistance, depending what's in, in, in here. So if you have a problem with the dimmer switch, you go to this, where you cannot control all the intensity of all of them. If you have a problem with a bulb, go to that bulb, right? Chances are it's that bulb. If you have a problem with, a few, uh, with two or three lights, look at the other ones that are on. Pull out the schematic and say, okay, the relay must be good. This must be good. This must be good. Why must all this be good? Because the other ones are on. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll take a little break from this today, from these uh, uh, schematics. Uh, I appreciate you watching. My, uh, my channel is Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. The other one is Joe Electronic Schematics. Please watch them about transistor, uh, Ohm's Law, for basic electronics for students that I know that have been watching from uh, certain colleges, vocational colleges, um, electronic, uh, electrical engineers, I actually, they told me they watch these videos and find them helpful. That is humbling, believe me, and that is a great compliment when you have electrical engineers watching your tutorials. Thank you very much and hope to see you in the future.